Hello FPL managers and welcome back for another video. My name is Jack and today we're talking about the knee jerk reaction for game week 24 of FPL. If you guys are looking forward to some more FPL videos coming up shortly, click the like and subscribe button as it really does help out the channel and make sure those notifications are turned on as well as there's going to be lots more content coming your guys way with the blank and double game week 25 coming up plus a bunch more of blank and double game weeks coming up for the remainder of the FPL season. So with that being said, let's jump into the video. So in today's video, we're going to look over the most transferred in and transferred players so far this week and give you guys a recommendation as to whether or not you should go with the crowd and bring these popular players into your team or release them from your squads. First of all, let's have a look at the most transferred in players that are coming into Game Week 24. The first and most transferred in player here is João Felix. It is good to see him get on the score sheet for Chelsea as he did pick up 9 points in Game Week 23 with a well-taken goal away to West Ham. And he definitely does look like an exciting pick at just 7.5 million. Definitely a player that I'd be keen to keep an eye on over the coming game weeks. As Chelsea do look pretty good in way of avoiding a blank game week 25 and avoiding blank game week 28 as well. They also have a roughly 50-50 chance right now of whether or not they're going to be playing in at game week 32 as well. So they could potentially avoid that blank game week as well. So maybe those Chelsea assets could come back into favor as they have lots of fixtures coming up. They don't miss, uh, don't miss out, should I say in blank game weeks. And with a couple of good fixtures in the near future as well, maybe those Chelsea assets could be worthwhile keeping an eye on, especially Zhao Felix at just 7.5. If he can finally provide uh, that goal a threat and goal-scoring ability that Chelsea have been lacking from a striker so far this season, then there's no reason why Zhao Felix couldn't be a nice forward option at 7.5. As around that price uh, price range, there is a couple of decent other options. Uh, and the other one here is Ivan Tony. And if you're looking to get a Zhao Felix, you'll probably be competing with a spot here with with Tony as Tony of course picked up nine points as well in game week 23 with another nice goal for himself away to Arsenal Definitely could have had this one ruled out for a number of reasons, but it did stand for Brentford, and he was able to pick up some bonus points as well. So once again, despite the difficult fixture, a way to Arsenal, he picks himself up his goal, and now Brentford have some good fixtures coming up. The key thing to look out for with Tony, though, is that he does blank in Game Week 25, so that is definitely something that you do have to pay attention to. If you're getting him in for Game Week 24, be prepared to bench him for Game Week 25 and have enough players available for Game Week 25 to be able to navigate that Game Week without having to take a massive amount of hits or ideally having to use your free hit as if you are looking to free hit, you probably would be looking to do it in game week 28 to avoid a massive amount of blanks rather than game week 25, just because there's a lot more teams blanking in game week 28 compared to 25. So definitely keep that in mind when bringing Tony in. But if your team is well set up enough to have Tony in the side and still have 11 players starting without having to take massive hits, then he is definitely a good transfer in as he's got a good fixture in game week 24, which we will discuss a bit later, and also some other good fixtures coming out from game week 26 onwards. So on Another nice forward option to keep an eye on. And Mikhail Saka, of course, another very popular transfer in. His ownership has really skyrocketed over the last couple of game weeks. Now over 30% in the midfield for Arsenal. He's already got an assist in his first match of the double game week. Plus, he's got that extra fixture against Manchester City as well which looks to be a great game between two of the top sides so far this season. Definitely Bakari Saka, a nice pick at 8.3, especially since Arsenal double in game week 25 and avoid all the blank game weeks in 28 and 32 coming up. So definitely it would be keen to have those Arsenal players, probably an Arsenal double up, if not an Arsenal triple up in the team right now. And if you don't have Bakari Saka, definitely a good player that I'd recommend having in the teams. Also looking at another Arsenal player here, it's Gabriel Martinelli. There has been a bit of frustration growing around him recently as he has consistently blanked across the last three to four weeks really frustrating his owners and I think especially with Odegaard and Saka firing for uh, their attacking assets in midfield as well plus there are a couple of other good uh, defensive options that you could go with for Arsenal whether that's Ben White maybe you want to go for Ramsdale even Zinchenko as well in a fullback slot he was taking quite a lot of shots in game week 23 for Arsenal and was getting very far at the pitch so since there is quite a lot of other good Arsenal assets maybe Martinelli's falling out of favour 
And if you do, uh, or if you don't, sorry, have any other issues in the team coming to Blank Gaming 25 and your team's well uh, set up enough and you can afford to do that sideways transfer of Martinelli to either Saka or Odegaard, then I definitely would recommend making this move. But it's definitely not a top priority transfer as if you do have other players blanking and you can't get 11 starting players, going Martinelli to another Arsenal attacker or another Arsenal midfielder, should I say, is probably not worthwhile. Jacques Cancelo, obviously a popular transfer out. I definitely look to get him out soon before his price continues to decrease. He's currently at 7.1, but I wouldn't be surprised that this does drop quite a bit across the next few days just because so many people are getting him out of the teams. And Mitrovic, another popular transfer out as he is now blank for five consecutive game weeks for Fulham. Definitely not been in his best form as of late, and I do think Mitrovic is a good transfer out, especially with a couple of other good forward options going around right now, whether that's Ivan Tony, Jao Felix, as we touched on, another popular transfer, and maybe a good replacement for Mitrovic as well if you're looking to mix it up in terms of getting a more differential option in the forward line. So with all that being said, let's have a look at eight players currently on our transfer watch list for Game Week 24. These are players that I would recommend you guys keeping an eye on as they do have good points potential across the next few game weeks. Plus, a good place to have in the team to avoid uh, having too many blank game weeks and looking to target double game weeks coming up as well. The first one here is Max Kilman. He's got a double in Game Week 25 plus Bournemouth at home in Game Week 24, which is a great chance for Wolves to pick up some clean sheets as their defense has looked a lot more solid recently. Probably a bit unlucky to concede away to Southampton in game week 23, as it was a very, very good goal from the Southampton player, and a bit of a fortunate deflection off his original shot, comes back to him, then has a nice stroke off the post from the edge of the box. So a bit unfortunate there from a Wolves perspective, they didn't get a clean sheet, but once again, it looking pretty solid at the back, and Max Kilman at just 4.3, has started every game for Wolves this season, has hardly missed a minute in the Premier League this year, and for such a cheap price, he's definitely a nice option to have in defense as obviously Bournemouth at home is a great chance for a clean sheet plus the double in game week 25 provides extra chance of returns and the Wolves also do face two of the other three promoted sides outside of Bournemouth in the next six game weeks so definitely a good team to target in defense especially since their options are quite differential as well if you're looking for a more differential defender then maybe those Wolves assets could be uh, worthwhile having a look at but Kaya Saka of course is on the watch list at 8.3 a nice player to have in the team a good player at that £8 million price for one of the best midfielders around this price. Probably between him and Riyad Myers right now, two of the more formed players around that £8 million price tag in the middle of the park. Obviously, Arsenal have got Aston Villa away, then the double. So if you're looking for another Arsenal player on the team, Bakayo Saka, of course, is a good pick. And Jao Felix, as we touched on earlier, he's got a great fixture in game week 24 of Southampton at home. Currently, his predicted points aren't very good with just 10 predicted points across the next six. But I definitely think this will change. There's quite a lot of uncertainty around him by Fantasy Football Fix right now. That should definitely update very shortly as he looks to get more nailed on for minutes especially after a good performance in game week 23. Not only did he score a goal, but he did provide some good link-up play. Got up the pitch as well, provided himself as an option for getting uh, for Chelsea to shift the ball up the pitch. So he looks to be a nice option there. Odegaard, of course, as well. Another good pick for Arsenal. He's a little bit cheaper than Bakayo Saka and doesn't quite have as much predicted points across the next six weeks with just 32. Compared to Saka, who has the second highest predicted points across the next six with nearly 38. Still, though, at seven million for a player that's expected to score 32 across the next six weeks looks to be a very nice option and if I had to pick my two favorite Arsenal attacking assets it's probably still Odegaard and Saka with Enketia a uh, just in third position they're probably still ahead of Martinelli if I had to rank their four popular midfielders and forwards in FPL so I still like Odegaard there. If you don't have him in the team, definitely a player worthwhile considering. He's one that hasn't been in the best form recently, but he's still getting in some good positions on the edge of the box. And once he is found, he's generally pretty clinical with his shots. Mo Salah as well, another player that I just wanted to keep an eye on, as well as Andy Robertson. I can see why there's a lot of frustration around Liverpool assets right now. Obviously, a lot of people will be confused why you'd be looking to go back to them. But of course, since Liverpool do have the double in gaming 25, I think it is key to keep an eye on those players. As we know when they're at their best, they can be very, very productive. Obviously, with Mo Salah, you're paying a massive price tag of 12.7. 
And if you're looking for a premium midfielder option, maybe you've already got De Bruyne in the team and you have the funds to easily go up to Salah in double game week 25 for Liverpool, that could definitely be a decent option. Also, considering that Liverpool, uh, sorry, Man City do blank in game week 28, I have a very decent chance of blanking in game week 28. Liverpool are currently 50-50 right now. We'll have to see how those FA Cup fixtures play out between some other teams. But if Liverpool are good to play in game week 28 as well, they avoid the blank, then definitely their assets could be worthwhile looking at, especially sell over to Bruyne from game week 25 onwards, considering Liverpool do have the double. And also, if Salah still has massive predicted points across the next six with 38.2, which is the highest of any player on the watch list, as you can see here. Andy Robertson as well. I just wanted to touch on him at 6.8. If you've got money in the bank and maybe you've got a defender sitting around 4.5 uh, 4 to 5 million, maybe you've got a couple uh, a couple million left in the bank and you have the funds to go up to Robertson at 6.8, he could definitely be an option uh, worth considering. As of course, Newcastle away in game at 24, probably not the best pick. I wouldn't look to bring him in this week, but one to keep on the watch list for game week 25 as Liverpool do have the double if you want to target those double game week players in game week 25 Andy Robertson is probably my favorite Liverpool defensive asset as he's already recorded five assists this season which is actually an extremely high amount of assists it's actually one of the highest amount of assists out of any defender in FPL so far yet I haven't seen it too much discussion around him the main concern with him, of course, is Liverpool's defensive strength in the way of the clean sheets, as Andy Robertson has only recorded three clean sheets this year, despite getting five assists. So we'll have to see. Liverpool can tighten up their defence across the next couple of fixtures. We'll have to see how they go in game week 24 as well, and I'm interested to see how they got on in game week 23 in a big Merseyside derby against Everton. If they can really tighten the screws in their defence in the next couple of weeks, maybe there could be good options to target in double game week 25. Plus, they also have some decent fixtures coming up after double game week 25 as well so just keep an eye on Andy Robertson he's also got some good predictive points with just over 28 across the next six so keep an eye on him for now. Tarkovsky, another player with a double game went coming up in 25. Under Sean Dyche, Everton have looked very solid defensively. Obviously, it's a pretty small sample size just based off that one game against Arsenal. They have obviously still got their fixture against Liverpool to play in game week 23. And if Everton, it can look solid once more. They've got Leeds at home in game week 24, which is a decent fixture. Tarkovsky getting consistent starting minutes of just 4.2. Another very, very cheap starter for Everton right now. Also, is coming off a 15-point haul in game week 23. 22. He got himself a goal, a clean sheet, and some bonus points. He could be a decent pick as well, and a very uh, good differential option for very cheaper, just 4.2. You're getting a good, consistent starting defender for a defense that hopefully should be improving in the back half of the season under Sean Dyche. I'm really interested to see how Sean Dyche can tighten up this Everton defense. And if he can do so successfully, maybe you want to go for Tarkovsky in double game week 25 is a bit of a differential pun, but it really just depends on if Everton can keep up their good defensive form after that clean sheet against Arsenal. And the last one here is an Arsenal defender as well in Zinchenko. I really liked his positioning in game week 23. He was getting very far forward once again. Took quite a few shots. None of them were really too threatening, but the point is he's getting into some good areas, getting chances. Obviously, not big chances, but as far as defensive positioning goes, he's very far up the pitch. Pitch and does have one of the highest attacking positions out of uh, fullbacks that I've seen over recent weeks. So definitely a player at 5.1, a little bit more expensive than Ben White, who's also a decently popular pick in that Arsenal offense. But he's getting probably more attacking potential, in my opinion, in Zinchenko. So if you're looking maybe for another Arsenal defender, or if you don't have an Arsenal defender right now and you're looking to get one in, maybe Zinchenko could be a good pick here. Obviously, Arsenal were Aston Villa away this week, then double in game week 25 and avoid blanks in game week 28 and 32. So another player to keep an eye on as well with a very good predictive points across the next six with over 28 points. So another option worthwhile considering for the teams that doesn't have a massive ownership currently. Thanks for watching today's knee jerk reaction for Gaming 24. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, drop a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel, pushes the video out to more people. And if you do want to stay up to date with more videos coming up shortly, click the notification bell as well. Obviously, there's lots to talk about in Wave FPL across the next few game weeks with lots of blanks and doubles coming up. Also, a quick reminder this is your last chance to get tickets for FPL Social in Melbourne. You can get them via the link in the description. We're going to be there. So if you want to come, meet us and talk about FPL, play some fun games, definitely check that out as well if you are in Melbourne. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.